Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan and today we are going to be talking about the short story Sweat by Zora Neale Hurston for this next installment of Short Story Saturday. Okay, super quickly, the rules of Short Story Saturday, the story is down in the description below and you should go read it because this video, which is going to be me talking about what I find super interesting about the short story, is definitely going to contain some spoilers. At the end of the video, I will mention what short story we are reading next and we'll just keep cranking all the way through 2016 talking about a new and by new, I mean classic short story every single week. Logistics aside, let's do the dang thing. Okay, Sweat by Zora Neale Hurston. This story was originally published in 1926 as part of the Eatonville Anthology. And the basic story is this. Delia and her husband Sykes live in a central Florida town and their marriage isn't going so well. Sykes is, objectively speaking now, a terrible person. He publicly cheats on his wife and it also doesn't work, so that Delia has to work long and hard hours as a washerwoman of white people's clothes in order to keep some food on the table. In fact, because her life is so easy, Delia has to wash her clothes on Sunday, the day of rest, because she has to get the clothes back to the white families before the week starts. The entire title of the story, which is just Sweat has to do with Delia's position as a black person who is also a woman. Just in order to make ends meet and to keep her physically and verbally abusive husband off of her case, Delia has to once again serve the white folk. She has to do their physical labor for them. She has to sweat. Her sweat, her physical labor, is the only thing she has to keep her afloat. And some people comment in the story that actually that physical labor is taking her only other asset from her, which is her beauty and her youth. Okay, so but one of the things that people talk about with Zora Neale Hurston all of the time, specifically with this story and also with the novel Their Eyes Were Watching God, which a lot of people read in college classrooms, is the kind of aspect of anthropology in her fiction. Zora Neale Hurston, as well as being an essayist and a novelist, was also trained as an anthropologist. She in fact grew up in Eatonville, Florida, a town founded by black families, and spent a lot of her time as an anthropologist studying the ways of the oral traditions of black families in the South. And I don't think that these conversations about dialect and anthropology are unimportant or wrong. I am just going to talk about something a little bit different in this video. I want to talk about the very last line of the story, specifically the last eight words of the story. One, because I'm just in love with endings, but two, because I think that it says something super important about a change that occurs over the course of the story. What has happened in the story up to now is that Sykes, who we all know is an asshole, knows that his wife Delia is afraid of snakes. And so what he does is he puts a rattlesnake in the hamper that she does her laundry in. And she comes home and she's terrified because obviously, I mean, there was a rattlesnake in the place where she almost stuck her hand, but she's also not all that surprised because Sykes has been an asshole for most of their marriage. She's scared of the snake whose nature is to bite and she's also scared of Sykes whose nature apparently is to abuse her. And so what she does is she runs out of the house and she waits out the snake. But then much later, Sykes comes home. And Delia has two options. She can call out to Sykes and she can warn him and she can tell him that the snake is in there. Or she could stay silent. And she stays silent. By the time we get to the last line, Sykes has already been bitten and he's going to die. The only real question that is in the reader's head is, is Delia going to go and witness the death of her abusive husband? Is she going to witness the debatable murder that she has maybe committed by staying silent? She can hear him and she can barely see him. What she's seen is that Sykes has been bitten on the neck and one of his eyes is swollen shut and the other eye is open, looking for her to come and save him. And the last line reads, she could scarcely reach the chinaberry tree, where she waited in the growing heat while inside she knew the cold river was creeping up and up to extinguish that eye, which must know by now that she knew. Which must know by now that she knew. Those are the last eight words of this story, and in my mind at least, they signify the greatest change that has occurred in this story. Delia's entire problem is basically a physical one. It's a question of labor. She's doing way too much work for not nearly enough money in order to support herself and also a husband who abuses her. In this last sentence, in these last eight words, Delia overcomes the physical for just a second. Delia has what I'm gonna call for lack of a better word, a victory. It's a, it's a hard victory, but I think she has a victory. Sykes is dying because the abuse that he tried to dish out to Delia has been turned around on him. And now, in his final moments, as he knows that Delia can hear him, but she isn't coming to save him, he knows by now that she knew. And like I said, that's a hard thing to call a victory. 
But on the other hand, Delia is doing what she has to. She is staying at the scene, she's listening to his dying cries, and she's reckoning with the change which is about to happen to her world, which is that the abuse got turned around on the abuser, and that the physical in the end became a little bit less important than the intellect, the knowledge, the knowing. And that is why I love the last line of this story. I think it's a model for what the endings of short stories can do. Speaking of which, I am super happy to announce that the story that we're reading for next Saturday is a super short one, but one of my favorite endings of all time. It's Bullet in the Brain by Tobias Wolf. I will put a link to that story down in the description as well. If you are behind on these stories and you don't know when to catch up, this might be a good one because I think it's like eight pages, 10 pages max. But anyways, I can't wait to talk about that story with you guys. You should let me know how this story went for you down below in the comments. I will see you guys on Monday with a book review. I have been working so hard on this book review. I can't wait to get it to you guys on Monday. Until then, best wishes! Hey beautiful people of the internet, my name is Ryan and welcome to our third short story Saturday. We are getting rolling with these things and I am having fun with them. I'll put a link to the playlist of short story Saturdays down below in the description. She lay there. Delia, Delia. She could hear Sykes calling in a most despairing tone as one who expected no answer. The sun crept on up and he called. Delia could not move. Her legs had gone flabby. She never moved. He called, and the sun kept rising.